I've had quite a few comments in response to things that I have said about changing my diet, about sugar and eating less processed food and things like that. And I've had a lot of advice on that. But one of the problems is people are missing the main point of what I'm doing, which is trying to be healthier eating wise on a tight budget. Now currently my food spend at the moment is below 30 pounds. It was about 30 pounds a month. It looks like it's actually about 22 at the moment. We'll see how the year pans out. So I've had lots of suggestions about the sort of fats I should be eating the sort I shouldn't, the things I should eat, the things I shouldn't eat. And I think a lot of people forget that, not so much for me, because it's partly by choice that I spend less on food, because I'd rather spend it on other things and save my money. But for people who are in a very tight budget situation where they have no choice, they are the victims of the food industry. So you won't have any choice but to buy the cheapest bread, the te cheapest cuts of meat, the processed stuff, the ultra processed stuff. Because even if you're not eating fast food and you're going to the supermarket and buying as much as you can for your money to feed your family, not something I have the challenge of, I'm only feeding myself, you will be forced into buying those cheaper things. So advice about you know, better fats, so eat butter, not margarine, have olive oil, not vegetable oil, um, don't eat any processed or ultra-processed food at all, eat eggs, eat this, eat that, is all very well, but these things cost a lot more money. The difference in price between a bottle of vegetable oil, a, what, like a one litre bottle of vegetable oil and a one litre bottle of olive oil is over seven pounds. That's the difference. That's not the price of the olive oil. That's the difference. So you can't expect people on a budget who want to eat better to make those kinds of choices. I've opted for eating less of and one of the other things that I think people have missed in what I've been saying is that I am a foodie, therefore I don't want to exchange things in my diet. I want to cut them out. So telling me to stop having sugar but have sweeteners instead does nothing for me trying to not want to eat sweet stuff. The best way to stop having sweet stuff is quite literally to stop having it at all because your brain is, human brains are wired for addiction and that can be anything and that's why we have such a problem with health in this country because food has been designed to be incredibly addictive. So if you want to stop being hooked on fast food, let's say um, ultra processed food, on sugar, uh, whatever else it is that you're addicted to, you simply have to stop eating it and give it time and your brain will, will rewire itself. Since I stopped having the sugary stuff that I was having in my morning coffee, I've noticed several things and I've been doing that only for a few weeks. First, I've stopped craving sugary stuff full stop. Second, I've stopped wanting to snack in between meals. And thirdly, my energy levels have vastly improved. I've not felt this much energy in ages. Now, if I decided that actually I do want to keep having sweet stuff in my coffee, I've got used to having coffee without it now, actually, I didn't think I would, but I have. If I then go and stick a sweetener in my morning coffee, that's going to give me the craving back for sweet stuff because it's the taste. 
If you forget what it tastes like, if you forget what it's like to have that, you stop wanting it. And it's like any addiction, you have to go cold turkey, you have to stop having it to get over it. So I'm cutting out the sugar and I now find that I don't really want it. And that's only taken me a few weeks. I think it can take a while. It depends on you as an individual. I think it depends on how much you are having. Um, I would say that I'm, I have cut back probably, let's say an extra 40% of processed foods that I was having before because I'm not buying any of the things that I used to snack on in between meals, like um, the shop shelf bread, things like that. I don't have any of that now. I've stopped all the, I've stopped buying all the food that I can snack on in between. So I just make meals now. If I have sweet things, it tends to be fruit. Um, I don't have an awful lot of fruit because again, it has to be something that I can get cheap. Um, I do have bananas, sometimes I'll have grapes, occasionally I'll fall off the wagon and I will end up eating something like uh, my last car camping trip, I bought a pack of cookies and scoffed the lot in less than 24 hours. That is where my problem lies, is that I can't just have one of something, I have to have the whole packet. That's what I'm like and it's what I've always been like and the only way to stop me doing that is not to have it available at all because I have no sense of moderation. The other thing that someone asked me about was to do with milk. And they said, why do you freeze milk? Why don't you just buy long, li long life milk? And my first thought was, well, it's probably got additives in it or preservatives to make it last longer. And apparently it doesn't. It's just milk. It's just been sterilized at a higher temperature. And it's basically just the milk. They don't shove anything else in it. And I thought, well, maybe that will work then. Maybe... You know, certainly as a space saver, that's a good idea. But my bottom line is, how much does it cost? So I buy a six pint of milk. A six pint of whole milk in Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's or in most brands at the moment, because they're all competing against each other, is £2.15. Now, I always water my milk down to get the most out of it, because I'm not fussed about having whole milk. I'm quite happy to have semi or skimmed as well. So what I do, I decant the six pints into six one pint bottles and I put it in the freezer and then when I need one I take it out I defrost it and as I use it I top up the the bottle to the top with water until I reached a point where I know that I don't want it any more watery than that so effectively uh, six pints of milk oh blowing out the sun <laughs> Sorry about that. The sun's just gone mad. Uh, so effectively, when I buy six pints of milk, because I water it down, it makes up to 12 pints. So that's 12 pints of milk for £2.15, which is my kind of budget. So I had a look online at the price of long life milk. And the best price I could find in Sainsbury's as an example, I mean, they'll all be different, but this is just an example, was uh, six litres of long life milk for £5.34, which works out at 89 pence per litre. Now, when I work out my 12 pints of watered down milk, which was £2.15, that comes in at almost 7 litres, and that works out at 35 pence per litre. So it's considerably cheaper for me to half and half water down my milk, stick it in the freezer, and do it that way. I'm okay about the space, because it's only me. I'm not having to feed anybody else. I'm not having to cater for anybody else's feeding habits. And equally, by giving myself more limited space, it stops me over shopping. Because if I know my freezer is full, and it's full of vegetables that I've blanched and frozen, and it's full of fish and meat that I've bought, 
I know that I do not need to go to the supermarket that week and go down those aisles. It might be that there are other things that I do need. I might want things off the chill counter and I'll go to the reduced section, section chill counter and see what's there. But I am used to going into a store, going to all the discount sections and not finding anything I want. And then I come home without. But I've always got plenty in the cupboard. It's not like I am scrabbling around for the last things to make something out of. And because I scratch cook, I can create a meal out of pretty much anything. So, all that advice doesn't really work for me because the bottom line is the budget. And it's partly because I'm on a lower income. That's in part by choice. It's also in part because prices are a joke in the supermarkets right now and I don't want to give the supermarket my money in the same way that I keep my energy usage down because why on earth should I give the money that I have to greedy energy companies that's how I feel about it so for me the bottom line is the money and I quite like the challenge of that I enjoy being a frugal shopper I enjoy being a scratch cook I like the challenge of right what's in the fridge and the freezer today and what shall I create but I'm very good at monitoring it as well so I have my spreadsheet so I know what I've got in the cupboards I don't forget about the thing at the back that sort of thing and equally I don't want to you know I am a food person I enjoy food I am not a person who just eats because if I didn't I would die I eat because I enjoy it so I do want to still keep having those nice little things every so often I like making apple crumble therefore I will make apple crumble I won't do it all the time I might do one once a month it's not like it's a regular thing if I have the apples to use I will make one if I don't have the apples to use I don't make one it's as simple as that I mean the difference between eating an apple crumble and sitting there with a bowl of stewed rhubarb is immense because stewed rhubarb it's all right, but if that was my only choice for desserts, I'd be depressed about that. Um, and things like, you know, buy honey if you need a sweetener, but don't buy the processed stuff. Have you seen the difference in price between cheap honey, and I know it's not good honey, and the expensive stuff? Because it's a lot. It's like that olive oil price. And it's that whole thing about, well, if you're poor, you're going to have a bad diet. It's and, and that only rich people can afford to eat properly. And I know that a lot of that is education because I can eat healthily and I can eat well on a very tight budget. But I have a very different lifestyle to a lot of people. I don't have the time pressures. I don't have picky kids. I don't have um, issues with what I can and can't eat. You know, I've got the stomach of a cast iron, whatever. <laughs> I can pretty much eat anything and it's not a problem for me. So, my bottom line really is budget. I will pick up anything and turn it into a meal, but how much did it cost? So, my under £30 budget a month does not allow for olive oil or eating eight eggs a week or butter or organic honey. It just doesn't. And that's why you won't see me using those things is because I can't afford them. And in part, it's because I don't really want to afford them. If I am concerned about the amount of oil I'm using, I will cut down on oil. And I don't use a lot of oil. It takes me two or three months to get through a bottle of vegetable oil. Because I've got used to, uh, you know, I'll just start the pan off with a little bit of oil. And then I'll put water in to stop the, the meal from drying out. That's how I've worked out how to do it. So... I have cut down on an awful lot of things, um, but I don't want life to get boring, you know? At what point do you stop cutting things out and go, you know, life is so dull now because I can't enjoy a chocolate bar or I can't have a nice coffee, you know, or maybe I can't have a packet of crisps, crisps every so often. It's just a soulless existence if you can't enjoy things every so often. So that's kind of how I feel about that. Um, I'm doing things gradually, so I cut out the snacks, I've cut right down on my ultra-processed, I've cut out the purchasing of that 
complete rubbish and now I'm working on the sugar and that's going really well and I definitely feel better just cutting out that morning that morning sugar in the coffee has already made such a difference it's really strange but I think the knock-on effect of that is that because I'm snacking less eating less ultra processed stuff less carbs having when I need breakfast having a protein breakfast rather than cereals which again are just sugar and starchy stuff and all that sort of thing I think that is making quite a difference and I've seen other people saying that you know once they cut out sugar it took a while but once they got used to not having that they didn't miss it and I still get little you know if you put a packet of biscuits in front of me I will still eat it I still find it hard to say no but if it's not there in the first place I can't eat it so that's why I find it very easy not to buy things particularly when I see the difference it makes to my budget when I see that there's more money in the bank that is a better motivation for me for buying less rubbish than improving my diet and my health money is a good bottom line for me because you know I, 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 I want to stay out of debt I want to be able to put money into savings I want to have backup funds so those are those are my thoughts on that and I'm sure there will be more comments to follow from people but uh, I'm, I'm not going to be going over to long life milk because it's too expensive anyway so that that's where I am on that if anyone else has found other hacks and shortcuts to saving money on food that don't you know completely destroy your enjoyment of eating do let me know it's it's really interesting to see what other people are doing and how they play that game i like playing that game i like knowing that my money isn't going to big corporate greedy ceos and what have you so they can make as much money out of us as possible works for me